car speed again. And this week, in this video, we're going to talk about something that's very uh, close and dear to our hearts as racers. The thing that everybody struggles with and everybody adjusts when you're on the racetrack. This week, we're talking about tire pressure. What would you know about pressure? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about tire pressure, right? Everybody adjusts it at the racetrack and everybody has to take guesses on what tire pressure they think they need. You know, some want to drop tire pressure, some want to add tire pressure, some guess, you know, am I too low on air pressure? Am I too high on air pressure? Um, and kind of one of the, the effects, and then we start talking about, you know, the split. What's the difference between the left uh, tire pressure versus the right side tire pressures? So we're gonna kind of go through, you know, bits and pieces of that. Um, just like all our other videos, you know, we're not gonna get real deep into the physics side of it, but I'm just gonna give you the, the meat and potatoes of, the nuts and bolts. So when you're at the racetrack, you can feel like you can make a good educated decision on, uh, on what you need your tire pressure to be. Okay, so um, essentially your tire pressure equals sidewall spring rate, all right? The higher tire pressure you use, the more spring rate you have on your sidewall, okay? Means the sidewall is stiffer and doesn't want to give as much, all right? So with a track that's biting up a lot, you tend to run higher air pressure because it stiffens up the spring rate of the tire. The tire loses a little bit of bite and therefore frees up the go car. Now, keep in mind, let me back up real quick. This is on dirt. On asphalt, it works a little bit different. We'll kind of talk about that. But on dirt, when the track starts gaining grip and bite, you tend to run higher air pressure because, again, it tightens the spring rate up on the side of all the tire. The tire loses grip and it frees up the whole go-kart, okay? I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole, hmm? Lower spring rate, or lower tire pressure, does the, the opposite. It lowers the spring rate in the sidewall, causing the sidewall to give and flex, uh, and will add a uh, side bite or bite to your tire. So in low grip situations, you go down in tire pressure because again, it causes the sidewall to be able to bend and flex because the spring rate is lower and therefore it will cause the tire to have a little bit more side bite and you get additional grip because of that. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dave, that's all well and good, but I hear these people talk about, you know, tire splits, you know, and, and pressure splits. What What is a split? And like I just said, the, the pressure split is different between your left side tire pressure and your right side tire pressure, okay? Well, why do you want to run a split? Why not run it the same all the way around? Well, let me tell you what a split does. So it all has to do with weight transfer, okay? For instance, the higher split you run means that there's more air in the right side tires than the left. So if you're running a one pound split, that means the right side tires have one more pound of air pressure than the left side tires do. If you're running a two pound split, the right tires have two pounds more air than the left side tires. Well, where is that beneficial? Well, let me explain it to you. Just like we talked about spring rates, okay? When you run a pound more in the right side tires, or two pounds, when you, when you, when you increase that split, okay? That means the spring rate in your right side tires is higher than the spring rate in your left side tires. So when that go kart goes into the turn and starts feeling the lateral forces and the lateral load, the right side tires will resist weight transfer more so and keep the weight more on the left side tires. Essentially freeing up the go kart. Okay? So that means that if you run a one pound split and then you go to a two pound split, what am I doing? I'm freeing up the go-kart because I'm making it harder for the go-kart to transfer weight to the right side tires. Why? Because again, it is, it's, a, it's a, stiffer, a stiffer spring rate on the right side tires, just like shocks and suspension in a race car, okay? If you're running 400 pound springs here and 600 pound springs on the right, 
Again, it's not going to transfer the weight over because of the stiffer, uh, the stiffer springs. Okay. Same thing with tire pressure on the go kart because we don't have shocks or suspension. Our suspension is the sidewall of the tire. So the higher the air pressure, the higher the split, the less the go kart is going to transfer weight to your right side tires. Well, then the opposite, then, okay, <clears throat> if the track isn't making a whole lot of bite and grip and you need more bite, then you can lower the split. You might go from a pound to a half pound split or a three tenth split because then it's gonna allow the go-kart to transfer weight more on the right side tires and increase the overall grip or bite of the go-kart, okay? Because now your lateral forces, the, the tire and the spring rate isn't gonna fight the lateral forces as much and the go-kart's gonna sit more on your right side tires. Even in extreme situations, you could run what they call a reverse split, which means there's more air on your left side tires than your right. Well, what is that going to do then? If I'm running what I would call like a negative one pound split, which means the left side tire pressure is one pound more than the right side tire pressure, that means the go kart is now going to really transfer weight over to the right side because the spring rate on the right side tires are softer than the left sides. So the go kart then gains a whole lot more grip or bite. Wait a minute, David. Are you talking about hillbilly air? <laughs> Well, Mike, I guess you could call a reverse split that. That's pretty funny. Uh, okay, so let's move it on. Uh, what about the difference between asphalt versus dirt? Well, uh, I know what you're thinking that, oh, Dave, it should be the same. Well, it's not really the same because the track surface is different. On asphalt, you have a lot of grip in that track surface and it is no give in it, okay? Well, whenever you go up on the air and asphalt, it tightens up the spring rate on the sidewall and essentially takes this, the, the tire patch, the surface of that tire, and drives into the racetrack. So when you go up in air, you end up getting tighter than looser. That don't make no sense. Okay. The reverse of that, if you want to free up the good part, you go down in air. Because when you go down in air, the, again, you lower the, the, uh, the spring rate of the sidewall and therefore the sidewall bends and flexes more and causes the tire to slide which is different than what it is in dirt because again, on dirt, you don't have as much available grip in the surface of the racetrack. So it kind of works a little bit different. But in asphalt, you can go from 10 pounds of air up to 30 pounds of air. And at 30 pounds of air, you will be a whole lot tighter at 30 pounds than what you will be at 10 pounds, okay? <laughs> You serious? I know what you're thinking. Well, Dave, how do I know if I don't have enough air or I got too much air? Well, usually, you know, a telltale sign of not running enough air, you know, is that if you know you're on the right gear, okay, and you know your gear combination is correct, a lot of times if a go kart or your competitors are running more air than what you are, they will be a whole lot faster than what you will be the first half a lap to two laps of a race because the tire is going to roll more because it doesn't have as much um, flexibility in the sidewall. The tire, the roll resistance of the tire is gonna be less than what a tire with lower air is. So therefore, they're gonna have a whole lot more speed the first half lap to about a lap of a race. So if you know that you're on the same gear as your competitor and the green flag drops and they roll up the speed a whole lot faster than you are, could it be, you know, how my tires are prepped? That is possible. What it also could be because you, they have more air pressure than you do, okay? Well, on the flip side, how do you know you have too much air? Well, usually on dirt, too much air was either A, the good car's gonna start sliding, or B, you know, it starts off good, but I get four or five laps into a run, and again, the tire of the good car starts sliding again because with heat, raises your tire pressure, okay? So if you got too much air to, to begin with, or you're on that line of too much air, when you get four or five laps into a run, the car starts gonna start sliding because again, it has too much air. There's too much uh, spring rate, and the spring rate, the, the sidewalls are too stiff, and therefore won't let the tire bend, flex, and grip, and therefore it will slide across the, the surface of the racetrack. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, whoa, hold on now, David, but what about, you know, the tire, the, the tire coning, or having too much air, or making the center part of the tire pads raise up? Well, that does happen. 
but that also is tire brand specific. Like, you know, the tire might start coning on a Maxi uh, sooner than what it will a Burris, or a Burris might cone more than what a Maxi does, or a, a Reaper might cone more than, than a Burris does. My, my point to that is, is you have to, that's going to be something you're going to have to try with the tire brand that you're running, okay? Um, but anyway, guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful. And uh, again, man, remember, race is tough. Don't be leaving no speed in the trailer.